Hello, 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 and welcome back to Andy Mac Drums, a special Andy Mac farm edition of Andy Mac Drums, and I've been putting quite a lot of farming simulator videos out recently. I just find it one of the most relaxing computer games. I, I do lead a very busy life. I need some way of switching off, and I find this helps me switch off, and I know a lot of adults who do the same thing. But if you just want to chill out for a bit, you can just drive a combine harvester up and down a field for a couple of hours. Anyway, by popular demand, I've had a few people asking me, how do you play Farming Simulator, specifically Farming Simulator 19? How do you get started? But I'm gonna just give you a, a quick guided tour, show you some of the basics so that you can get up and running as quickly as you can. So a couple of things to talk about before I show you the game itself. You need a reasonable spec PC, but having said that, I mean, mine is a, an i7 processor in it, but it's about seven years old at least. I think my computer is pretty old. If you just go into options in Farming Simulator, I'll show you, I mean, I've got mine on high custom hardware profile. I'm in HD and everything seems to run absolutely fine. I've got a reasonable graphics card. I think it's a, I can't remember. I'll shove it in the description, the graphics card I've, I've got, I've completely forgotten. The other thing to consider as well is having a steering wheel and pedals. You can pick up a steering wheel and pedals for your PC pretty cheaply these days. It makes life a load easier. So again, I'm just in the main options from the home screen at the minute. And from within here, you've got the keyboard controls. There's a lot of keyboard controls. Don't worry, you don't have to memorize all these. I'm gonna show you some of the key ones you need to know. It'll tell you what keys to press. So don't, don't worry about memorizing all these keys. And if you do have a steering wheel and pedals, then you'll also want to go into the um, gamepad option, sorry, uh, it's down the bottom here, the gamepad option, um, and within here, you can set additional controls, like buttons on your steering wheel and all that sort of thing. But you can do that from within the game, you don't have to do it from, from here. One thing a lot of people miss is make sure you've got game pads and steering wheels switched on, otherwise it'll just not work at all. That's just in your general settings, game pad steering wheels needs to be set to the on option there. I think it's default to off, and if it's off, your steering wheel won't work. Finally, on your settings thing as well, if you are using a steering wheel, if you just go on to your, your far right, your gamepad settings on the far right at the top there, click on switch device, and it should switch it over onto your steering wheel settings. If you've got a wheel, you can see I'm using a Logitech Driving Force Pro, and I would suggest, I've got the dead zone set at 2% at the minute. I'm actually going to change that to zero. I find the dead zone when you've got a steering wheel is more of a hindrance than a help. So I'm just going to set all of those to 0% or certainly for access 1 and access 2. I'll do 3 and 4. I'm not sure what they are. And just make sure you do apply after you've made any changes there as well. So we're ready to start playing the game. And the first thing I would suggest you do is go through the tutorials. There's a whole load of tutorials to take you through arable farming, crop protection, fertilizing. It takes you through a whole load of stuff. You don't need to do the forestry one unless you're particularly going to get into forestry. But I would certainly do all of the other ones up to baling. Just, it gives you an idea of how it works. So don't take long to do, and it just gives you a bit of a head start. And then, when it comes to playing the game, all you do is go to career. I've got my farm there. I'm just gonna click on a new save game, and, well, I'll double click on it. And generally, I would suggest just doing farm manager. If you do new farmer, it's gonna give you some land and it's going to give you some equipment and everything and it makes it a bit too basic i don't think you need to go down the new farmer route unless you like you're playing with very young children and things start from scratch you can do that if you want the only problem is because everything's set on the hardest settings it just takes a lot longer to get anywhere and that can be quite frustrating you, you can maybe get a little bit impatient if you go down that route farm manager is the way to go really so all I'm going to do is double click on that and we're going to play this on, well, we've got Ravenport and we've got Felsbrunn, which are the two default 
maps that you can play on. Oh, one other thing, sorry, we'll just go back to the start here that I didn't show you. Um, multiplayer, obviously, if you want to play with other people across the world, you can do that. You can either join a game or you can create your own game. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go into multiplayer stuff on here, but if you do want to play with family members and stuff, then you would do that. To create a multiplayer game, you literally just go into create game and you pick one of your save games that you've already got. So you would set up the farm first, get everything how you want it, and then you would go into the multiplayer mode to create a, a multiplayer game, basically. Um, and we've also got mods. So I'll, I'll very quickly show you mods. Um, mods are basically like modifications to the game. There's hundreds and hundreds of different mods. You know, it's basically stuff that's not built into the standard game. I try not to use mods, or certainly for the first series that I, I'm kind of in the middle of filming at the minute, I'm trying not to use mods on that at all. I've, I've only got a couple on it. If there's a specific thing that you feel is missing from the game or you can't find it, you can almost guarantee you'll find it within mods. For example, I wanted like fences at one point. Search for fences. Fence. So if we talk about mods, that's what we, they are. I would suggest when you first start playing, try and avoid using mods because it just makes life a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. You can always come back and install mods later down the line. Worth bearing in mind that if you are playing multiplayer, you all need to have the same mods installed. Otherwise, um, you can't join the game, I don't think. So let's set up a new farm. So I'm going to do it on Farm Manager. And just for a change, we'll do it on Felsbrunn. You can pick your character and you can like give them a name and all that sort of thing. You can pick mods that you've already got installed because you basically have to install the mod and then you pick which mods you want to use for that particular version of the game. I'm just going to deselect all of them. I'm not going to use any mods as I'm starting this out to show you. And here we are in the game. So it's straight away saying you have enough money to start farming. Um, what are you going to do? Blah, blah, blah. I'm just going to assume you're going to do some arable farming, you know, a few crops and things like that. I'm not going to get into livestock and things in this video. Uh, there's lots of videos out there. I'm just going to show you the absolute basics. So I'm using my mouse to look around. So that's getting controlled with my right hand. And then on the keyboard, I'm going to use W to walk forwards. These are all, by the way, all the controls I'm showing you are on a PC. Obviously, if you're playing on PlayStation or different platforms, it might be slightly different. I'm going to show you the PC controls, but you'll work it out. It's not complicated. Um, w, A, S and D, very common shortcuts to, to walk around in a computer game. W to walk forward. S to walk backwards, A to kind of shuffle to the left, and D to shuffle to the right. And if you want to run, hold down shift while you're walking, and you can walk a little bit faster, basically. Okay, so shift while doing something makes you do that thing a bit faster. Space to jump. And that is pretty much all you need to know about walking around, really. With all of that in mind, you can have a little wander about. There's not a lot that we're going to be able to do until we've actually got a farm, though. So let me just go into the options. First shortcut key you're going to need to know about is the escape key. You're going to use that a lot. That's going to take you into the options. And you're going to be in here all the time because this has got, on the first tab, we've got a map of where you are. The maps are pretty big so each one of these is a field and you can work out what's on the field by the color of it and you can also work out what needs doing to that field um, by the color of it as well if you use this little filter thing over on the right at the minute we're on fruit types but if we flick through I've got the growth um, tab this shows you whether it's been cultivated whether it's growing whether it's ready to harvest if it's been harvested if it's uh, bean ploughed, uh, remove tops is for certain types of crops where uh, the top of the crop needs to be chopped down before you can do the next bit and brown is withered, you've left it ready to harvest for to too long and you've lost your crop and it's withered, you can't do anything with it then other than pretty much just plough it back into the ground 
Um, we've got the soil composition. You do need to know about this. I play with weed switched off, by the way. Let me just show you some of the options, in-game options. So if you just go into the game settings at the top there, uh, we've got my save game. Can I change that? Let's call this um, demo Andy's tutorial. We'll come back to time scale in a minute. I'm just going to set that to uh, real time for the moment. Economic difficulty, I've got on normal. Traffic, I've got on. Dirt, we've got on. Automatic engine start, I prefer to have that off. Uh, stop go braking, I prefer to have on. Fuel usage, we'll have on default. Uh, helper refill, we'll have on off. Helper refill on seed, we'll have on off. Helper refill on fertilizer, we'll have on off. Uh, we'll put all those off. Plant growth we'll have on normal. Plant withering we'll have on. Crop destruction, up to you. If you drive on a crop, you will cause damage to that crop. I would suggest when you first start playing, you switch that off. Periodic plowing, I normally leave that on. It's fair enough that you're going to have to plow the fields every now and then. Plowing fields takes quite a long time, by the way. Periodic lime, again, I generally have that on. Weeds, I'm going to switch that off. Um, if you want to add weeds on, it adds another level of realism, but it also gives you quite a bit more work to do. So for the minute, I'm going to leave that off. I'm just going to save this while we're at it. In the general settings, let's have a look in here. I don't think there's anything really we need to change in here, to be honest. Switch to trains. There are trains on the maps, and you can go into the trains, and you can move crops about using the trains. But... Um, I'm not going to go into that in here. If you do plan on using the train, then you'll need to switch switch to trains on in here. But I'm going to leave that off for now. If there's a particular shortcut you want to set up, if you go into uh, your game control settings at the top here, you've got keyboard controls and you've got gamepad controls. So gamepad controls is basically your steering wheel and pedals. And finally, if you get completely stuck and you can't remember something from the original tutorials, you've got a whole help section here. That tells you what all the different symbols are for the different crops, how to do everything in the game. This is your whole help section of the game. Other stuff you need to know about in here. Um, as I say, we've briefly touched on the, the map. The next one along is the current prices. This is the market. It's how much stuff is selling for. You're going to have to check this all the time because you want to make sure that when you've harvested a crop you're selling it while it's at its highest price uh, so for example here's soybeans they're currently at 1409 pounds per thousand liters at the grain elevator east so if you go on the map so there's grain elevator east over there so if you harvested a bunch of soybeans that would currently be your best place to drive them to to sell them over time, you're going to learn what all these symbols are. Don't panic about it for now. All you need to know is at the point that you're ready to sell something, you need to go into here to check how much it's selling for. The vehicle overview, I never use that tab, so don't worry about that. The next one along is kind of a profit and loss account type thing. It's, it's a track of how much you're making per day. Very rarely look at that, to be honest. You've got your livestock tab, animals. If you've got animals, this is where you would check how they're doing. Your next one, this is useful, contracts. So there's a couple of ways of making money in the game, one of which is make, harvesting your own crops, and another thing is to do jobs for other people. And from time to time, contracts come up in here, and you can do contracts for other virtual farmers in the game. These aren't real people and the contracts just randomly change from time to time. Contracts are a really good way of learning how to farm certain types of crop and you get paid for it. So I would advise you do contracts when you first start off. Some contracts are quite quick. Fertilizing contracts tend to be quite quick and profitable. Some other harvesting contracts can take a long time. So double check what field it's on before you agree to do in the contract. Because if you get a contract on this map for say, uh, most of the fields on here aren't too ridiculously big, but field 10, field 12, they're pretty big fields. Contracts on those fields will take a long time. We've got harvesting contract here for field eight. Let's have a look at field eight. Field eight's over uh, on the left-hand side there kind of medium-sized field that take a reasonable amount of time to do a contract on that field 
Um, when you come to do a contract, you can either use your own equipment if you own it, or you can hire the equipment as part of the contract. And it'll tell you how much that costs. For example, if I wanted to do this uh, harvesting contract here, it says I'll get paid £4,253 for doing the contract if I use my own equipment. Or you can use their equipment and it'll basically cost you £670 to hire their equipment or it just gets deducted off the total cost of the contract. And then you'll be provided with this equipment that's at the bottom here, a harvester, a header, a tractor and a trailer, which is everything you need to do a harvesting contract like this. So I think let's do a contract to get started. Let's not even buy any equipment. Let's just do a contract. And all I'm going to do uh, is borrow items. Don't do accept contract unless you're planning on using your own equipment. We're going to do borrow items. And that has accepted the contract. And now we need to go and pick up the equipment we need to do this contract. So where are we going? We're going to field 18. You're going to pick the equipment up from the, the shop. Where's the shop? Here's the shop here. That's where you get your equipment from. And if we zoom in, all those little yellow dots and things are the equipment that we have just basically hired. So we need to go to the shop to get that equipment. So we can either walk to the shop if you want. And by the way, nine on the keyboard shows a little map on the bottom corner. You could walk to the shop, which would be down here. That's going to take a little while to walk to the shop. So instead, what you can do is you can use tab and that will automatically take you to one of your vehicles, whether it's a hired vehicle or a vehicle that you've bought. The tab key on the keyboard takes you to it. So tab, we're straight away in one of the tractors. If we had more than one vehicle, you would press tab again and it would take you to the next vehicle. At the moment, we've only got this one vehicle. So all I'm going to do, start the engine, enter to start the engine. And I'm just going to drive forward a little bit just to get to the front of the vehicle. Reverse back. I'm using my mouse to look around so I can see that I'm reversing to the right place. You just need to be vaguely near it. You see, that's close enough. You don't need to be perfect. And it tells you, press Q to attach it. Q. There we go. Q again will detach it. So I'm just going to attach that on and show you one of the most important parts of the game that a lot of people miss. If you look in the top corner of the screen, you can see a tiny little tractor and a tiny little thing behind the tractor. That is showing you which tool you've currently got selected. And you switch between them by pressing the G key on your keyboard. So you can see at the minute I've got the tractor selected, G again, now I've got the trailer selected. If you press F1, that shows you all the shortcut keys you need to know about that particular tool. So at the moment, because I've got the trailer selected, it's showing me shortcut keys I need to know about that relate to the trailer. If I press G again, it shows me shortcut keys I need to know about relating to the tractor. Uh, let's see, it's telling us, well, hmm, you probably don't need a weight, but I'll, I'll put the weight on actually. It's just, um, which way around is it? Some very bad reversing. But I'm just going to attach this weight on the front. Q. So now, if you look on the top left, we've got a front tool, which is the weight. We've got the tractor. And we've got the back tool, which is the spreader. So, and G switches between them. So if I want to make the weight go up and down, V, it tells you there, V, lower weight. V again, lift weight. So if you want to know the shortcut keys you need to use for a particular um, tool or vehicle, then F1 brings up your help. F1 brings up your shortcut keys, help. And then G to switch between tools. So next thing we need to do we need to buy some fertilizer and this particular fertilizer, well, this particular trailer uses a solid fertilizer. So we need to go to the shop and buy some fertilizer. To go to the shop, you press the P key on the keyboard. And this is where you buy equipment, everything. If you want to buy something, this is where you go. 
top of the screen here, we've got brands. If you want, if you want to go down the route of only buying a particular brand of equipment, you can filter by brand. You're probably not going to use that option. The next one along is uh, basically vehicles. Uh, I'm not going to buy a vehicle at the minute. The next one's trailers or tools. The next one is objects, which include things like um, seeds, pallets, uh, fertilizer that we're going to need at the minute. So we're going to buy some fertilizer. Let's just go for, um, you can normally take a gauge of how much you're going to need by the value of the contract. And this contract's not worth very much. So I'm assuming one bag of fertilizer is going to do the job. That's going to eat into your profits of this contract, by the way. So uh, even if a contract says it's worth 4,000, you've still got your costs on top of that, but hopefully it'll not take very long. So I'm just going to double click on the solid fertilizer bag there and I'm going to do buy. Do I want to purchase it? Yes. Okay. That is now waiting for me at the front of the shop. In fact, there it is. Anything that you buy appears at the shop ready for you to pick up. So the next thing I need to do is fill the fertilizer spreader up with fertilizer. So all I need to do is drive a little bit closer to the actually let me just do f1 to help am i close enough i'm not quite close enough watch out all oh, right we've got the option there you see r to refill the fertilizer spreader so we're just going to hit r on the keyboard and that will automatically fill it up done so our little fertilizer pallet thing has gone it's now inside our fertilizer spreader so we're ready to do this contract. Where do we need to go again? I'm just going to hit escape. Have a look at contracts. It's the active contract and it's field 18 we're going to. Where's field 18? Field 18 is over here. So let's go for a little drive. Now I find it's easier to drive equipment on roads from being inside the cab. Personally it's absolutely up to you whether you want an out of cab view or an inside cab view but I prefer to be inside the cab when I'm driving around and all you have to do is press C on the keyboard and C switches between outside and inside. So let's drive along to this field. Right, here we are at field 18. So, to do a fertilizing contract, it's much easier to do the work from outside the cab, looking kind of vaguely down, because then you can see where you've fertilized and where you haven't fertilized. Let me just get to a, a kind of starting point. I think about there will be fine. Because I've got the fertilizer tool selected at the minute using the G key, remember I'm looking at the top left hand side of the screen to make sure I've got the fertilizer selected. And with this particular fertilizer, all we need to do is switch it on. So B to switch it on, and that'll start using fertilizer straight away. So let's just try and get this done as quickly as possible. I'm gonna drive around. You'll see the field will turn like a slightly darker color while I'm doing the fertilizing. I'm gonna do this whole field, remember, so that you don't waste fertilizer. Press the B key when you're not over the field to switch it off. Let's just go for it. So I'm gonna to get to the end here and I'm gonna switch B to switch the fertilizer spreader off. Turn around, let's do a next row. You can just about see the darker area that we've done. On, co on contracts, you don't need to be perfect you only have to do like a percentage of the field and it depends on the type of contract but um, for a fertilizing contract don't waste your time doing every last little bit if it was a harvesting contract it would be different but for this don't worry if we we'll miss the odd tiny little bit Right, I'm just going to pause for a second and go into my options and see how far I'm through this contract. So I'm do just using the escape key, go into the contract, 98%. I'm very, very close to being done on this. So I'm just going to swing round. It's just really this little strip at the end here. Right. 
Right. Did you see on the top right of the screen it says contract on field 18 is finished. So I've switched the spreader off. There's no point in finishing this because you don't get any extra money for going past the end of your contract. The contract is done. So all I'm doing is I'm going to do escape on the keyboard. In your contract section you can see it's completed. You can see we're going to get a reimbursement. The reimbursement is for the fertilizer that's left in the spreader. So you don't get paid for the fertilizer that you use for the contract, but you do get paid for anything that's left in after the contract's finished. So that's what the reimbursement's for. We've got the lease cost that we briefly talked about when we first started this contract. So we're just gonna do collect, and that is us done. But because we've collected the contract, you can see we've now had £3,927 of contract income. I don't have a vehicle anymore because the leased items have been returned. So I'm back on foot in the middle of this field, I'm afraid. <laughs> there are, if you do tab now, tab won't do anything because you I haven't... I don't own any vehicles. So folks, I think that is plenty to get you started. Just have a bit of fun with the game, do a few different contracts, get the hang of the controls. Don't panic about buying any of your own equipment or anything like that quite yet. We'll cover that all off in part two. So if you've got any questions or anything that you would suggest to a beginner getting up and running in Farming Simulator, then please pop them in the comments below. For now, take care folks and tatty bye.